In today's video, I review Professor Tim Spector's Day of Eating. He's done so much work within the microbiome and genetics, and I have followed his work for a long time. So this is going to be interesting. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. As always, just a quick reminder that I'm now offering the SIBO, organic acid, stool tests and consult via my website. So if you have any health or digestive problems, then consider taking these tests as they will provide a lot of very detailed information upon which you can start making informed decisions and then start getting your health back on track. And on that bombshell, to the video. Hi there, I'm Tim Spector, Professor of Epidemiology and expert in gut health nutrition and co-founder of the company Zoe that brings you personalized nutrition. Now, I'm often asked, what do I eat? As long as you don't say you water fast for 30 days, drink pee or drink lemon water upon rising, then we should be all good. And so I thought I'd invite you into my home today to show you the range of things that I would eat on an average day. And let's start with breakfast. And here we go. So let's go on to the most important drink of the day. And that is, for me, a black coffee. Hmm, important drink. Look, if you enjoy drinking it, then great. But important, not so sure. But let's see where Tim goes from here. Made from good beans, dry roasted, packed with polyphenols. And it turns out that the Zoe Predict studies have shown that coffee drinkers have really high levels of a beneficial microbe that we call Freddy. You can tell instantly if someone's a coffee drinker or not just by looking at the gut microbes. Freddy is a species of bacteria known as Formicutes that are great for producing butyrate in the gut that keeps your colon healthy. So what Tim is saying is part truth. Coffee will increase Freddy, but so will so many different fruits and vegetables. So it's a great start regardless of whether you're going to have breakfast or not. And sometimes I don't. But let's assume we're in one of those days where I'm going to have the full breakfast. So the first thing I'm going to get out is some full fat yogurt. It can be Greek style. It doesn't really matter as long as it's good quality. Poor guy, he was doing so well. And it has no other ingredients in it. So no sugars, fruits, it's not low fat. Um, and for me, the fat is important because I learned when I did my uh, own Zoe scores that breakfast I was having, that was the sort of breakfast cereal stuff, even though it said healthy muesli on the packet, was giving really big, bad glucose scores. So for me, starting off with a fatty breakfast means I have a better metabolism, I'm less hungry later in the day. It's difficult to comment on what Tim is saying without seeing his test results that he's referring to. But obviously there are lots of healthy plant-based sources of fat that Tim could look at. And I would also be particularly interested to see what issues he was having with glucose spikes. And then the other ingredient is kefir or kefir, which uh, is fermented milk for those who don't know. And generally it's from cows, but you can also get it from goats. And this has about five times the number of live microbes as uh, yogurt. And I often make my own kefir, uh, which is very easy to do and uh, means you don't have to spend large amounts of money on fancy stuff. So there are healthier plant-based yogurt options and also healthier plant-based kefir options such as coconut or oat kefir. Next, uh, yet more fat and protein actually with some mixed nuts and seeds. Don't believe all those people that tell you you only have these super brands like chia seeds and uh, ones that cost a fortune. Any real mix is good. They're all fantastic source, not only of polyphenols, but also of fiber. Totally agree with those statements. To finish it off, we're gonna go for some berries. People often don't know this, but things like raspberries have the highest fiber content of any plant. So plenty of blueberries, plenty of, of raspberries, and any other fruit you've got lying around. Just look in the fridge, cut it up, whack it in. The greater the diversity, the better. I'm really not sure in what context Tim is referring to raspberries as having the highest fiber load of any plant. There are many plants and plant-based foods that have significantly more fiber than raspberries. A cup of raspberries has around eight grams of fiber and a cup of kidney beans, for example, has around 46 grams of fiber. So I'm not really sure what Tim is referring to here. Delicious, and that's breakfast, simple. I would be ravenous by 10 if I ate that for breakfast. Give me slow release carbs any day. 
and then we'll move on to lunch and I'm going to show you what my really simple lunch is that is a hundred percent score for me on my Zoe profile. Zoe runs at one of the world's largest nutritional studies that anyone can take part in so I would recommend downloading the Zoe app if you haven't done so already as it gives some really useful help and advice. And this is one that's really good for my metabolism and is also boosting my microbes. And it involves our friends, the avocado. Full of fat, full of calories, but they are actually really good for you. They are so good for you, but... Oh, disgusting. And we're gonna be putting them on some sourdough rye bread. You can't beat sourdough bread. And while we're talking about bread, I should just remind you that the lunch I always used to have, particularly working as a busy doctor in the hospital for at least 10 years, was what I thought was healthy. I think I've got it somewhere here. Uh, this is my go-to lunch in the hospital. So a bit of tuna and sweet corn, uh, factory bread with some orange juice. And I, I used to have uh, a packet of potato chips as well. That is probably a standard lunch for 80% of many populations around the world. And I've discovered that that really was dreadful for my blood sugar levels. I thought it was healthy, I was completely wrong. He is actually worrying me with some of the things that he's saying in this video. Processed refined bread and crisps, and he actually thought this was healthy. Very funny. So they're rubbish. Let's go to what is a really good healthy meal. So we take an avocado and I will put it on the, the bread, but with some olive oil. And of course, not just any olive oil, we're talking about extra virgin olive oil. And that's because that's the only one that has really high polyphenol scores. Just eat fruits and vegetables if you are concerned with polyphenols, and then you are eating the foods in their whole form. So we can be liberal with this. Don't worry about the, the calories. If it's high quality, it's gonna be really good for you. Certainly an interesting statement to make. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Said no one ever eating flip-flop on bread. Mm. We're gonna get some paprika. We're gonna add a few tomatoes because they are actually gut boosters for me. And sometimes, not every time, but be honest, I will add some sauerkraut. This is fermented cabbage and we just take some of this, this kraut out and always make sure that you get sauerkraut that is not in vinegar. If it's in vinegar, all the microbes will be dead. So true, and you can't beat the taste of tomatoes and sauerkraut together. So good. Oh yes, that's very good, I like that. Then, uh, the final piece of the puzzle, if you've got them to hand, you can just whack on some beans. Beans are a fantastic source of everything from protein to fiber to polyphenols. So sprinkle them on. Uh, let's have a few more. So that is lunch done, which is designed to optimize my metabolism, optimize my microbiome, and hopefully taste great. Yes, I would agree it's a great choice. Although again, at that portion size, I would struggle to get full from. So now we're going to dinner. And my general theory for dinner is plant-based, diversity, spicy, and simple. I like it a lot. Something doesn't take too long. So the first thing I do is I look in the fridge and see what I've got lying around. And we've actually got some leftovers from last night, uh, which I've put together and I'm gonna show you. But basically they are consistent of a base of cauliflower, which is a fantastically nutritious uh, vegetable not use as much as we should. You fry everything up first with onions. Red onions are probably the best for polyphenols. Just a quick one on polyphenols. If you are not familiar on what they are, they are essentially compounds found in certain plant-based foods that are jam-packed full of antioxidants that have been shown to help with digestion, help with weight management, and also promote a healthy cardiovascular system. And of course, What's really important is, is getting lots of spices in here. And we've got turmeric, coriander, mustard seeds, uh, cumin, garam masala, and 
randomized controlled tr studies have shown that if you just add some spices to your food every day, your gut microbe is actually healthier. So it's a really good tip to get start getting used to them and start adding them to your food. Variety, as they say, is the spice of life, and spices are so good for a healthy digestive system. Basically, I, I fried up the red onions, and then I added the spices to that, making sure they were it was nice and hot, and then uh, added in the cauliflower, which had been baked for 20 minutes in the oven, then mixed some kefir, and this is the probiotic stuff, but without boiling it, making sure it's, it's just kept warm so you don't kill those microbes. You stir it all together, and then, um, just having reheated it, just to freshen it up a bit, uh, I'm gonna add in some more coriander. There best be something else more substantial to that meal. And so we've got in this uh, lots of different plants with about 10 different plants in this mixture, which are gonna boost my uh, gut microbes, help my fiber, um, probiotics, and it's a fabulous meal. I'm sure it tastes belting. And uh, just by heating it up, you often get more of the taste of those spices the next day. So let's, um, let's just see. Oh, come on, dude. So you've now seen what I eat on an average day. And I don't eat like this every day, it varies. And I think you should also vary too. And what goes for me doesn't always mean uh, you should be eating the same thing. Agreed totally. Health is a moving target and you have to understand your body and what is happening inside your body to give it the best possible fuel. But I wanna leave you with four key tips that I think work for nearly everybody. And they are number one, try and eat 30 plants a week. And that includes these herbs and spices and uh, things that we've seen that you might not have thought about. I think that's a great shout. It makes so much sense on every level and not just in terms of your gut health, but in terms of your overall health. It's not that hard. Second is to have some fermented foods every day. And we're talking about uh, the yogurts, the kefirs, the 4Ks uh, that we discussed, the kombucha, the kefir, the kraut, etc. This is something that I do every day because I simply love the taste of fermented foods. But there is little evidence to suggest that eating fermented foods daily will give you any significant benefit over eating it two to three times per week. Third is try and pick your plants that are high in color and taste and astringency bitterness. All the ones you see here are fantastic for that because that means they're really high in polyphenols, good for your gut microbe. Can't really add anything to that other than amen. And the fourth and final one is try and cut out as much as you can ultra processed foods which are bad for your microbes. I don't think anyone would disagree with those statements. So as a day of eating, there is so much good in here for the gut, but in terms of calories and nutrition, I think it's a little bit thin on the ground. Now, while Tim's day of eating may be indicative, I think that he has to be careful in not leading people into believing you can sustain yourself with this way of eating. Most adults would need more calories and greater nutrition than this. Anyhow, that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out this one up here because I'm sure you'll find it equally interesting. And the only other thing that's left for me to say is to remember to look after your body because it's the only place you have to live. And I'll see you next time.